The Airbus A220 narrow-body jet has been called a game-changer, but this jet isn't really a new aircraft. Bombardier first flew the C-Series in September 2013, with its entry into service in July 2016, and yet the A220 seems to be answering problems that we're not quite having yet. Airbus predicts a need for 7,000 A220s over the next two decades, and that's probably not too over-optimistic. Here's how the A220 is the plane of the future today. The landscape of aviation is changing. In the past, airlines operated on hub-and-spoke models. Furthermore, passengers were happy to fit around schedules and the price of jet fuel was so low that efficiency wasn't a huge consideration. Clearly, aviation today is very different. Increased competition among airlines means that carriers need to differentiate their service levels in order to maintain their share of the passengers. This has often meant flying more frequently on smaller planes in order to offer more flexibility to passengers. Rising fuel prices and price wars and fares means airlines are operating often on shoestring profits and seek more efficient aircraft as a result. For passengers, convenience and value for money have become key. Passengers want to see a range of departure times at major airports and also expect to fly from smaller airports direct rather than always being forced to transfer through hubs. There's also a growing impetus to satisfy passengers' environmental concerns, with some flight comparison sites listing the CO2 savings of one carrier over another, thus potentially influencing the passenger's decision. Over the long term, the present situation excluded, the price of jet fuel is only going to go up. Fossil fuels are a finite resource, and although biofuels can go some way to making up the shortfall, they are more expensive to produce. While passenger numbers go up, many are increasingly aware of their trip's impact on the environment. This includes the notion that a single direct flight is less carbon-intensive than a one-stop itinerary is likely to become more of an issue in the future too. The A220 has been built to tackle many of these future needs. Whether Bombardier foresaw these trends when they first announced the C-Series is unknown. Their clean-sheet aircraft was either brilliantly strategic or just a product of good design as it answers these needs in spades. The A220 has been designed to be a highly fuel-efficient aircraft. Considering the number of passengers on board, the efficiency is advertised by Airbus at 120 miles per gallon. Compared to other aircraft in its class, this outstrips almost every other model by some stretch. To compare, the 737 MAX 8 achieves 103.2 mpg and the A321neo 107.4 mpg. In terms of fuel burn, the A220 was marketed to achieve 20% better fuel burn than similarly sized aircraft. In practice, the A220-100 has been reported to achieve 9.1 pounds per mile on a short 500 nautical mile flight and 10.1 pounds per mile on longer flights. The Dash 300 has been recorded to achieve between 10.11 pounds per mile and 11.01 pounds per mile. This is lower than any other aircraft with a similar capacity, the closest contender being the A320neo, which was recorded at 9.9 pounds per mile over a 660 nautical mile flight. This lower fuel burn sets the aircraft up to perform well for airlines both now and into the far future, ticking boxes for both profitability and environmental consciousness in one swoop. The huge range of the A220 makes it possible to fly great distances and serve point-to-point -point routes that are not feasible with a larger aircraft. In May last year, Airbus expanded the range of both models of the A220, with the Dash 300 now pegged at 3,350 nautical miles and the Dash 100 at 3,400 nautical miles. This, along with the achievements of extended ETOPS for the type, makes trips across the Atlantic possible as well as routes connecting secondary cities on different continents. Added to this is the ability of the A220 to land on shorter runways or at difficult-to-access airports. A well-known example of this is London City, which is limited by the high buildings around it and its short runway. The A220 has been used by Swiss for some time to access this restricted airport, and its ability to land in similar conditions all over the world makes it possible for the aircraft to service smaller airports in underserved destinations. The high efficiency of the A220 makes it possible for airlines to deploy two or three of the same aircraft at various points throughout the day, rather than one large aircraft, and still operate on a similar profit level. 
This means that on high-demand routes, airlines could offer multiple departures per day rather than expecting passengers to manage with just one departure on a large aircraft. Over recent years, we've seen many airlines moving away from shifting huge numbers of people around the world on wide-body aircraft. Instead, they've moved to providing more regular services on smaller planes. This is increasingly important for business travelers who want to maximize their time at meetings and conferences, but also avoid the added cost of a hotel at the end of the day. For a prime example of how well the A220 works for airlines, one only has to look at Air Baltic. The carrier has been working towards becoming an all-A220 airline for the past couple of years and recently achieved this goal. Clearly, the A220 is working wonderfully for the airline and has enabled it to move from being a very small niche carrier into the emerging European competitor it is today. However, there are times when relying on one aircraft type may not be such a great strategy. You may remember in October last year, Swiss grounded its entire A220 fleet over concerns about engine shutdowns. This followed a spate of in-flight issues which had seen Swiss A220s being diverted and even one uncontained engine failure. That turned out to be a bit of a storm in the teacup, as all the aircraft were checked and back in the skies within a couple of days. However, if there had been a major issue requiring extensive repair or replacement, Air Baltic could have been in serious trouble. Nevertheless, for the time being, the A220 remains a serious contender for the future of short to medium haul flights and seems to be ticking plenty of boxes for both airlines and passengers for years to come. Airlines have been hit substantially by the events of the past few months. Large quad jets were the very first casualty of the global health crisis. On paper, it seems as though the Airbus A220 is the perfect aircraft to guide the recovery of the industry. We believe this for two reasons. Firstly, the aircraft are young and fuel-efficient. You won't find many Airbus A220 in service that's older than four years, as Swiss took delivery of the first A220 in June 2016. Secondly, the aircraft has a lower passenger capacity. According to Airbus, the two jets were designed for the 100-150 to seat market. Both of these characteristics are perfect for an aircraft looking to succeed in the post-pandemic recovery. The efficiency of the plane keeps fuel costs down, making it cheaper to run than older aircraft. Meanwhile, the lower capacity means that fewer passengers are required to break even on a flight. As such, there's less stress if a plane isn't packed. With that in mind, let's spend the next portion of this video looking at which airlines are operating the Airbus A220. Air Baltic currently has 22 Airbus A220 300s in its fleet, with another 28 on order. As the airline navigates the current crisis, it has selected the A220 to sustain its operations moving forward. With the A220, Air Baltic has the world's youngest fleet. A maximum of 145 passengers can fit on board Air Baltic's A220. As the airline is an all-A220 carrier, any Air Baltic flight will be on board an A220. Air Canada has seven A220 300s in its fleet. The airline ordered the aircraft when it was known as the C-Series and produced by the Canadian manufacturer Bombardier. The carrier has firm orders remaining for 38 of these with options for another 30 and substitution rights to the smaller A220-100. On board Air Canada's A220s are 12 business class seats and 125 economy class seats. This brings the maximum number of passengers to 137. These planes can be found flying to major cities in Canada. Routes include Calgary and Montreal, Calgary and Toronto, Edmonton and Toronto, Montreal and Toronto, and more. Air Tanzania has two Airbus A220 300s in its fleet. The airline operates these planes alongside its Dash 8 400s and Boeing 787s. On board, these planes have seating for 12 in business class and 120 in economy class. The plane performs several domestic flights to Kilimanjaro and Mwanza from Dar es Salaam, the airline's hub. Other destinations include Moroni, Zanzibar, Entebbe, Lusaka, Harare, and Johannesburg. Delta is the most high-profile airline in the United States to order and operate the Airbus A220. Delta currently has 31 Airbus A220 100s in its fleet and has a robust order book for the type. Another 14 A220 100s are due to the airline. In addition, 50 A220 300s will also go to the airline. The Delta A220-100 seat 12 passengers in first class, 
15 in Comfort Plus and 82 in Economy. These aircraft can be found flying out of Delta's hubs to major airports like Dallas-Fort Worth, Los Angeles, Salt Lake City, Sacramento, San Francisco, Seattle, Chicago O'Hare, Atlanta and Detroit, among others. Egyptian flag carrier Egypt Air has nine A220-300s in its fleet, with another three left on order. The first of these aircraft arrived at the airline in September 2019. Egypt Air has been flying the A220-300s on domestic legs from Cairo to Aswan and Sham al-Sheikh, Luxor and Haggadah. Internationally, the A220 has flown to Athens, Istanbul, Rome and others. There are 137 seats on board these planes, 15 in comfort class and 122 in economy. Korean Air has 10 A220-300s in its fleet. The carrier has no other A220s on order. These jets are in an all-economy layout with 140 seats. The airline primarily flies these planes on domestic legs between Seoul and Jeju and Busan. Jeju to Chongju, Jeju to Busan, Seoul to Uzlan and others. The A220 has also flown some international routes to Japan. Swiss is another prolific A220 operator. The airline has 29 A220s in its fleet. Nine of these are smaller A220 100s, while 20 are the A220 300 variant. One more A220 300 is expected to join the fleet. Swiss uses its A220s on intra European routes to cities like Frankfurt, Porto, London, Geneva, Dublin, Dubrovnik, Nice, Athens, Lisbon, and more. The A220 100s seat 125 passengers while the A220 300s seat a maximum of 145. So what's next in the evolution of the A220? Although the type is far too new to have a Neo version, there were rumours last year of a stretched version in the works. This would have been known as the A220 500, an extension of the Dash 300. The current A220 family does well in the 100 to 150 seat market, with the A220-100 doing well between the 100 and 120 seat market, while the A220-300 does well between the 120 and 150 seat market. The A220-500 would, theoretically, target around 160 or more passengers, overlapping at the lower end with the Airbus A320neo. The A220-500 would do well with several airlines, for carriers like Air Baltic, the A220-500 would be a natural addition on more high-demand routes without compromising the efficiency of operating a single type of aircraft. For another airline like Air France that has the A220-300 on order and would look at modernising its A320-CO fleet, the A220-500 would do just that and complement the existing A220 orders. Both Air Baltic and Air France have expressed interest in the A220-500. Other potential customers include Delta Airlines, Breeze Airways and Swiss. All of these airlines could use a 160-seater jet that would open up additional route opportunities in the case of Swiss and Breeze Airways. In the case of Delta Airlines, it would replace older A320s and Boeing 737s. Unfortunately, Airbus does not currently see a stretch to the A220 as a priority right now. While the aircraft manufacturer sees potential for it, Jeff Nittle, chairman and CEO of Airbus Americas, states that Airbus has other priorities, including focusing on cash preservation and the ongoing viability of the company. In an Aviation Week webinar, Nittle stated the following. Under Bombardier, there was a lot of discussion about the Dash 500 and the potential. That potential exists today, but it's not a priority. We have a lot on our plate. We're focused on cash preservation ourselves. He went on further to say that Airbus is currently focused on the strength of its A320 program. Plus, with the A220-100 and A220-300 doing well, there's no reason for Airbus to push forward for the launch of the A220-500 at this moment. We're excited to see the Airbus A220 grow into its role as an efficient, low-capacity, medium-range aircraft with airlines all around the world. As carriers emerge from the turmoil of 2020, we think the A220 will be key to rebuilding profitability. Have you ever flown on the A220? Share your experiences and opinions with us in the comments below. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? 
Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.